My name is Kyungmin Park. I'm a ceramic artist, currently living and working in the city of Boston. I'm also teaching at Endicott College in Beverly, Massachusetts. My works are mostly figurative ceramic sculptures. It can be functional, but not necessarily all the time. I was born and raised in South Korea, and I came to America when I was 20 for a better art education. As a kid, I always wanted to create my own clay animation, and that's where my storytelling in clay started. And today, I wanted to share how I make this wall-hanging figurative sculpture. For this project, I used the mix from Laguna Clay. As you see here, I start with creating a slab using a rolling pin. And the ideal thickness of the slab would be half to three-fourths of an inch thick. The basic structure of the head sculpture starting with a cylinder form. Once I have a perfect cylinder, I cut out a little square from the bottom to shape a chin and a jawline. And then I mark the middle point of the face so I will know how big the whole entire skull size would be. And here you're watching me to forming and define the shape of the skull. Since this is the wall piece, I'm just going to cut off the neck and then close it with a coils. The reason why I like to build sculptures in hollow form is that I have access um, both from the outside and from the inside. And it's helpful for me to control the volume. Now I'm trying to shape top of the skull using petals or to round up, sometimes I cut out this little triangle, which I'll show you in slow motion here. So up top, you're gonna cut a little triangle, and then you overlap two edges and put together to round up. Ta-da! Now you have a basic shape of skull. And now I'm going to mark where all those basic facial features will go on top of the skull. Then I'm going to use coils to close up a little bit of the top of the head. And then since this is a wall piece, I'm going to make sure that back of the head will be flat so it can easily hang on the wall. To start sculpting the basic structure of the facial features, I always start with the eyebrows, then nose, and that two little balls will become nostrils later on. Since this is going to be a frowny face, I'm going to add extra clay on top of the nose, and now I'm going to create an eyeballs. So first of all, I'm going to add extra clay, and using a tool to round up the edge, after that, I'm going to add these little coils one by one to create eyebrows, a little more exaggerated normal facial expression than just a frowny face. A quick side note here that today I don't have a picture of my model, but it's always helpful for you to have several pictures of your own model so that you can check and see why you're sculpting that if you have the right structure of facial expression or pose and etc. Since we're building it hollow form, if you notice the form is not right, you can always make a hole and then push it out from the inside. And when you have a right volume, you can put it back on. To make a very expressive facial expression, I notice that if I make open mouth and the teeth are showing and then the tongue is poking out, and all these exaggerated facial features became a signature on my figurative sculptures. 
and I really enjoy when audiences come up to my sculptures, my work, and and look at my figures and like, why they're so mad? Why they're all angry and screaming? What is this artist is trying to say with this overly exaggerated and expressive facial featured creatures? Well, maybe I am angry and mad about everything. <laughs> The narratives of my sculptures is from my daily life experiences. Well, it can be about my personal, I mean, almost too personal that I don't even want to write in my diary, but I feel comfortable actually creating my 3D diary in figurative sculpture. Or it can be about political issues that nowadays everybody has something to say about. I'm not expecting for all my viewers and audiences to be on the same page as me. But if my work can bring up some sort of conversation about their thoughts and feelings, I'll say that was my successful piece. Adding details, defining the shapes, are the process that takes up the most of time in sculpting for me. And sometimes, I mean most of times, I will work on it for hours and walk away for five minutes for a short break and come back to it and I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> what did I make? I wish nobody sees my sculpture right now. But I still have to sit through and spend other hours um, to make it better. And hopefully, this hours and hours of practice in my own studio will help me to have less mistakes. But I also questioning it. Am I ever going to make a work that I say, wow, I am 200% satisfied with work. Wow, this is flawless. I don't think so. But what I can tell you now is that when I have some issues with my clay sculpture, I don't afraid of poking a hole, pushing it out, and reform it or rebuild it. It is just clay. It is just dirt. Back to my sculpture that you're looking at. I just finished making two ears and now I'm going to make teeth. So I start with the thin slab that I roll out with rolling pin and I'm going to divide it up, which means making lines where the teeth will form. And then using my X-Acto knife and then shaping each an individual teeth by rounding up the edge of each line. And once 
all these teeth are individually shaped and then I'll give a little bit of um, height variation. I'm going to cut the teeth that will fit inside of the mouth and attach it from the back wall of upper lips and clean it with a paintbrush. Now I'm going to make the tongue that goes inside of the mouth and eventually will attach from the bottom of the lips. So I'm going to cut a shape of tongue from this thin slab and then pinch the edge of it so it's thinner on the edge. And I'll keep placing in and out from the mouth until I have the right shape. Once I know this is the right shape and position, I'll place it and attach it from the bottom lips. And then eventually later on, I'm going to make a hole from the back of the head and then put a coil in between the tongue and the bottom lips so it will be securely attached. And of course, as you saw now a couple of times, because I'm building hollow, if the form is not right, I will make a hole and then fix the volume and shape and put it back together. I have a couple of tools that I like to use while I'm building. Um, and then the most important thing is of course the exacto knife. And then the second one I would love to use is the rubber ribs. And then um, I also do have this popsicle stick like uh, wooden tools that helps a lot when I'm defining or uh, shaping the details. This series of works are inspired by one of the internet famous memes called Be Like a Panda, Destroy Racism. It says, Be like a panda, he, she, they is black. He, she, they is white. He, she, they is Asian. The sculpture is a reflection of myself going through this challenging time as an Asian immigrant in the United States. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we have witnessed so many terrifying racist attacks towards AAPI people. Living in the States for about 17 years, I have never felt this many threats simply because of my skin color. When anti-Asian racism gotten worse during COVID, I had a painful realization that I may always be considered as outsider to some people. Just like my official immigration status on my green card says, legal alien. An alien who belongs to another country. An alien who does not belong in this country. But to me, however, this is a country where I spent the whole of my 20s and 30s and where I became who I really am as a person and an artist. This is my new home with my new family and friends. And my new family and friends are the ones who helped me to go through this tough time and helped me to focus on creating artwork that can acknowledge this racism and inequality issues in this country. Prejudice is an ongoing problem for all of us, and we all must admit our own flaws and help each other. I hope you enjoyed this video today and then I hope this video brought some new conversation 
or thoughts or feelings to you. And thanks to Craft Boston to giving me this opportunity to create a demo video to share with many people. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email me. My website is www.kyungminpark.com or you can also follow me on Instagram at kyungminpark929. Thank you everyone.